people know the power of television testimony like Philip Schofield. For more than 40 years, he has been central to our national life. But last week, he left his job on This Morning on ITV amid a blaze of headlines and allegations. In response to newspaper inquiries, Schofield has now admitted that he had an unwise but not illegal relationship with a younger member of staff this morning. The younger man was 15 when they met, but 20, Schofield says, when the relationship became sexual. In the past week, there has been an avalanche of newspaper stories and social media speculation and abuse. Now, Philip Schofield wants to tell his side of the story, and I want to ask him some questions on your behalf. Philip, thank you for speaking to me and to the BBC. You've had quite the week. How are you? Um, it's like a weird numbness. I know that's a selfish point of view. But you come to a point where you just think, how much are you supposed to take? If all of those people that write all of that stuff, do they ever think that there's actually a person at the other end? And so, Here I am, um... Are you feeling okay to do this? Are you feeling strong enough to do this interview? Yeah, I have to. Why? Why do you want to do this interview? Because there is an innocent person here who didn't do anything wrong. Uh, who is vulnerable and probably feels like I do. Yeah, a lot of my questions are going to be uncomfortable and let's face it, intrusive, but you know, you've chosen this opportunity to tell your side of the story. Uh, and there are questions that your viewers, all the people who supported you over the years, including your family, um, will want answers to. There's also, of course, lots of questions for ITV in all this. You mention this young man, and at the centre of recent events is a young man who, together with many others in the media, we're not going to name. You know, under Article 8 of the Human Rights Act, he has a right to privacy, and he's not here today to give his own account of events. When did you last speak to him? Um, as I engaged the lawyer for him. Um, so um, he needed independent support. And so that was the last time. Is that a few weeks ago now? Yeah, a couple of weeks. OK. When you say that you engage his lawyer, do you mean you're paying for the independent legal advice that he's getting? OK. When did you first meet this young man in question? What were the circumstances? I was invited by a friend of mine to go to a school something I've done thousands of times. Whether it was immediately or sometime after, he said, will you, um, will you follow him on Twitter because he's a, he's a fan? So I said, yeah, sure, no problem, which I did. And he probably came back saying thanks for the follow. And he was, what, 15 at the time? Yeah. I follow 11,300 people, and in all the time I've been on Twitter, there has never been any whiff of impropriety. So he followed you on Twitter, you followed him back. Did you start having a sort of email exchange or direct message exchange of any kind? Hardly, uh, hardly at all. It was just all the way through, just on and off. And then he asked if he could visit the studios, work experience type of thing. I said, well, you come down and have a look for sure, which he did. How old was he when he made that first, there's two stages there. How old was he when he first said to you, I'm interested in television? Was he 18 by that point? Nine, 19 then, I would think. He was 19 by then. And then when he said, could I come and have work experience, he would have been older than 19. Well, just a, a, a more or less about the same time, because I'd organised it. And what did he ask you for? Did he, did he, so he asked you for work experience and you said, sure, come and have a look. Well, I do, I've done it all my life. My, I'm best friends with the people who got me into television. Um, and I've always believed in, in paying it forward. And so that was my, you know, it's just a, didn't think about it, you know, just did that. When you look back now, if you were to look back at those messages now, is there any sense in which 
you were flirting with him? No. I'm, I, I've been 41 years in television. You know, no, nothing like this before. You know, no, no accusations. I mean, this is, this is all, you know, accusations. Which is why I want to put them to you. And so if you're honest now, again, brutally honest, if you think back to that, because a lot's happened since then, it's a long time ago, but if you think back to those initial interactions, was there any element of it which was sexual? No. So there'd been a period of several years when you didn't meet him? Yeah. Yeah, I hadn't seen him. And then when you met him in person, was there a little moment of sexual attraction then even? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. OK, so to be absolutely clear, how old was this young man when you first had any kind of sexual contact with him? 20. 20. Because I wanted, I mean, this is obviously the nub of it, and for the record, and to put speculation to rest, did, let me ask you directly, did you have any kind of sexual relationship or sex with him when he was underage? No, God, no. That, I think that is, a, you know, in, our, in my statement, it, it says, you know, consensual relationship, fully legal. I mean, that was approved by both sides, you know, that's, no, no. And then when he got work experience at this morning, so he's then, he's 20 years old at this stage, he's someone who's come in. Well, that was, I think, by that stage at 20, he'd done, the, there was a, a work, the, he came in for a visit, we went out for, because he was going to be picked up, and I was worried that he might be on his own, so I said, well, we'll wait, let's go have, um, a, a, a bite to eat. It wasn't a meal, it was just a waiting for someone to pick him up. So it was, you know, it, it, uh, yeah, uh, don't worry, you know, don't go out there on your own and, 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 and be picked up. So at that point, you weren't in any kind of a relationship? No. God, no. Right, OK. How long after it, after that, was it that you had a, the beginnings of a sexual relationship with him? He'd been working at the show for a few months. Um, and, and we become mates. We were mates, and um, you know we ha around the studios. You hang out together, you know, you chat to each other, that sort of stuff. Um, and then in my dressing room one day, something happened. Um, which. You know, obviously I will regret forever for him and for me, mostly him. Um, but it, that happened maybe four or five times over the next few months. And I know it's unforgivable, um, but we weren't boyfriends, we weren't in a relationship. I was really in a mess with my own sexuality at the time. And it just happened. How old was he at this stage? 20, 21. And how else were you trying to help him? What else were you doing to help him with this morning? Did you help him in terms of getting a show reel? Did you help him meet people? Because he's... He had a lot of access. I did a show, I helped him, and I think that this might have been before there'd been any contact. I, I helped him put his show reel together. So after he gets work experience at this morning... He's now got a job. So he was then a given a job. job on his own merits, because he was very good. Um, very good at his job. Everybody loved him, um, and, uh, and worked very, very hard. Yeah, I mean, it's clear from the testimony that lots of people have given him he's a hugely talented and capable Massively young man. Massively talented, yeah. yeah. Just before we get into the relationship and what happened after that moment in the dressing room, if we go back, because you were very specific in your wording in your statement about how the relationship was unwise but not illegal, mm -hmm. and the question is of legality centres around your relationship with him before he was 18. Just to be really clear, your relationship between when you met him when he was 15 and then when he was 18 was... Occasional direct messages, no pictures of each other sent to each other, occasional direct messages, and you would say that that wasn't really flirtatious at all. It was just work related, just, you know, career, career advice, career help. And no sort of sexual forwardness at all in any of that stuff. Okay. How long did you then have a relationship with him which was sexual in nature? 
as I said, it, it probably happened five times, maybe six times, um, but nothing more than that. So when did your relationship with him end and why? I was, at the time, really in a beginning to get into a very poor mental state with my own sexuality and um, I thought that was bad, I'd be like this. Um, and I think it, you know, it just sort of drifted. I mean, it, we still stayed mates, we were still mates, you know, still, still, still stayed friendly. And I got him work, um, because obviously, you know, you're living in London, you're struggling. And he, he, I got him runner's jobs on other shows that I did because he was a, a very good runner and a mate and someone that you, you know, someone that you know. It's always nice to have a team around you of people that you, that you know. And did you ever tell Holly Willoughby? No, God, no. And that's a bit a, a bigger question because we, we, we have, our makeup room was like a sanctuary, um, has always been a sanctuary. So you tell everything in that room. Holly knows everything about me. I know everything about Holly, all the team that are in there. When the door is closed, then that, you know, that's the sanctuary. Um, and it is a wonderful, wonderful environment and something that I will miss deeply. And um, Holly, I don't know whether Holly ever asked me, she m might have done, but I would have denied. Holly did not know, nobody knew. And this has been the cataclysm of the lie, is that, you know, a lie, st it starts in a denial. No, 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 not at all. And then the rumor came out, rumor started, and then you lie. You know, you've had a, you've had a workplace fling and you lie about it. And a great many people would have had a workplace fling and lied about it. And I fully appreciate there is a massive age gap, but that happens in life as well. So you didn't tell anyone, but I wonder if people asked you. As you say, there'd been rumours for years and years and years about not only whether or not you were gay, but also about your relationship with this particular young man. So did anyone on the This Morning team ask you whether you were gay or in a relationship with this young man? Nobody ever asked me about being gay. Um, but people asked you about being in a relationship with this young man. Um, I, I, when, when the rumour got bigger, then we were both asked. And people would say, the circumstances are as follows here. You met someone who was a child, you were in a position of power over them, you used your power eventually to give them something they craved, which was a, shot at a job in the media, you nurtured a relationship and then that relationship became sexual. And they might ask, what's the difference between that and grooming? Well, I would d say that the initial list of things was not, not right anyway. Tell me, why? Because it was a totally innocent picture, a totally innocent Twitter follow, of which I follow 11,400 people, and, uh, and then it was a completely innocent back with forwards over a period of time about a job, about careers. You know, I mean, I, I, you do that, what, what's, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with, with talking to someone, no matter, you know, what age they are. Does that mean that if, you know, if you are, if you're following anyone on Twitter that you absolutely don't talk to anybody else or you don't give advice? So I, 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 I disagree with the summation that you just gave because that does paint a very grave picture. In which case, why do you say it was unwise? Because you're clearly sensitive to the power differential and you're clearly mindful of the dangers of abuse I of don't, power. I, the, 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 the brief communications backwards and forwards um, up to the point that, that he came to work on this morning, um, I think was just chat. Um, what was unwise was the fact that it happened. And that was a very, very grave error. Now, it was consensual, but it was my fault. Why? Because I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. It, was, it is entirely my fault. He is an innocent party here, and I appreciate, you know, how, um, you know, there is a moment, you have a moment, there's just a moment. Um, but he is entirely and completely innocent, although it was consensual. I, I, 
was older. I should have known better. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done it. What specifically do you feel that you did that was wrong? I... kissed someone in the workplace, which led on to a little bit more. Um, and that, you know, retrospectively, of course, you know, you think, my friends have said, what the, what the hell were you thinking? You don't do that. You've never done that. And I think there's no excuse. I'm not, I don't put any, there are no excuses here. I mean, I, I, I have, I am, um, it's my fault, but. I think the fact that perhaps I was trying to come to terms with who I was, what I was going to do about it, the effects that it would have, I think that's probably the reason. And do you feel, just listening to how you talk about it, do you feel that what was morally wrong about it was that it involved an abuse of power because you were an older guy who had more power than him? That, obviously that criticism has been levelled at me, but well, I've never done that in my whole life. I've never abused my power anywhere. I'm, I'm not a bully. Um, I don't, I mean, there are, you know, God, you read the things that you're supposed to be. You know, we don't, I don't lord it around TV studios. Everyone is a friend. I've gone through all of this time. The Most of the messages I've got are from people that I work with saying, oh my God, I can't believe they're saying this. And we, we love working with you. I don't, I, I, I snapped once, when I, around about the time that I was coming out, I snapped at one of our producers. And after the meeting, I immediately got up, went up to her and apologized. It's not me. I don't do that. I'm not rude on the studio floor. I don't bully people. I don't lord it around. We're all a very, very on one level team. Um, and that's been the important thing for me in 41 years of television. I can see how extremely concerned you are for the welfare of this young man. Did you love him? No, we were just mates. We were mates. Do you know if he has signed an NDA, a, a non-disclosure agreement, preventing him from speaking? No. You don't I know if he has? has. No, at the time, I, I, I was asked that uh, earlier on, did I make him sign an NDA? No, absolutely not. But there's a question of whether or not he was, as it were, paid off. And no. in effect, if he was paid off, no. was he paid for his silence? No, God, no. No, so no. is he free to speak if he wants to? Yeah, yes. I mean, what he wants is for all of this to go away. He wants a quiet life. He didn't want any, any of this to happen in the first place. And I'm sure he completely regrets it. I, it was my fault, so he has nothing to regret because it was my fault. Has there ever been or is there an injunction or any sort of NDA preventing media coverage of your relationship with him? No. And, and that, was, <clears throat> that was one of the things when the, when the rumour st started and then, it, and then it, when it came to light. And obviously both of us said, what the hell is this? Um, I don't know, I don't know. I said, well, it'll, yeah, um, it'll go away. But, you know, I'm sure it'll go away. And then it started to grow legs and it got bigger and bigger. It was said, there was a super injunction. It was said, um, I'd got him fired or moved on. All completely untrue. You work in television, you know the way the process works. No, you, you can't have someone moved on without it going through a whole team of people. Um, a, 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 the line of command, why would this happen? I, it, I, I actually spoke to him the night before, or texted, um, either the night before or the morning of I came out and said, I'm, I'm gonna come out tomorrow. And he said, oh my God, amazing. God, that's brave. Well done. Um, I hope it goes okay. So you know he knew about he knew about that. He was never gonna he was never gonna out me. We were still mates, and I think at the time it was even, it was written that the Sun were gonna out me. Well, a they, a, a they weren't, and b that's illegal. So all of these things started to grow. It got bigger and it got bigger and it got bigger. It's been said that the Sun 
had a story. They were approached in, I think, November 19, 2019, by the journalist Dan Wooten, who said he had the story that you were in a relationship with this young man or had been in a relationship with this young man. And the son knew about it, but there's a claim now, which I want to invite you to address, that the son knew both things. They knew you were gay and they knew uh, you'd had a relationship with this young man, but they decided not to do the story about you and the young man in return for the exclusive about you coming out. Oh, God, no. No. No, no, no. No, no. Absolutely categorically untrue. We had massive meetings about... I had a secret WhatsApp group... Well, it wasn't WhatsApp. I had a WhatsApp group um, called The Event, uh, of which there were a handful of people. My management, the closest management, me um, and my... And a a um, uh, a, a guy who is a sort of a media lawyer type of thing, trying to figure out the most elegant way to do this. Uh, Holly and I had lunch, um, and we're trying to figure out what was the best date, um, and then it, I was advised. When you do it, obviously this is going to be, it's going to be big news. You should really have an interview afterwards. And it was suggested to me that, you know, the sun w would be, would be the, the, the paper to go to. OK, so let me, let me put directly what Dan Wooten says that you can debunk if you wish to. Dan Wooten said, he now works at GB News, a decision had been made for the newspaper to have a closer relationship with ITV, and as part of that closer relationship, they were offered, the Sun was offered ringside seats and an exclusive interview for this coming out announcement. As a result, obviously they, the Sun, wouldn't run a story about the young runner. It was prompted by Philip. That is categorically untrue. And I've got to say, there are a great many things that have been said that are categorically untrue. Now, I, I have, you know, I, I have nothing against Dan, and now I've actually brought myself down to a far, far greater degree than you could ever have done. I have brought myself down. I am done. Um, I have to talk about television in the past tense, which breaks my heart. Um, but it continues, and it is relentless, and it is day after day after day after day. And if you do that, if you don't think that that is going to have the most catastrophic effect on someone's mind, what do you, do you want me to die? Because that's where I am. I have lost everything. My girls saved my life. They said, last week, they haven't left me for a moment. They've been by my side every moment because they're scared to let me out of their sight. What is that like for a daughter to have to go through something like that? And they said to me, don't you dare do this on our watch. We're supposed to be looking after you. And if my girls hadn't been there, I wouldn't be here because I don't see a future. And so how much do you want a man to take? And are you truly only happy when he's dead? And this is how Caroline Flack felt. And it didn't stop. And I know I've done something wrong. I know I've done something wrong. I've owned up to doing something wrong. But a constant... Her friend's texting me this morning saying, mate, this is relentless. I, when is it going to stop? What, what's the agenda? When, when is this going to stop? Someone said, you're being treated like Jack the Ripper. And I haven't looked at a single thing. I have, I, that, would be, that would be the final push. I haven't looked at a single newspaper item. I deleted all the apps. I took my notifications. I have... Um, looked at my phone or looked at the news, but people, well-meaning people, come through to you and can't believe this has just been said.
can't believe you've been painted out to be this person. We know you, we love you. Please love the person that we know you are. All of those things. But still it comes. Still, it is utterly relentless. Uncontrolled. Online. Why is all this coming out now, Philip? What was the catalyst? What changed? It got too big. The lie got too big for both of us. It just got enormous. It was growing and growing and growing. And it, it crossed over from, the, from online to uh, mainstream news. And that, has, that had to stop. For, for his mental health, it had to stop. ITV's position is that they, and they've only put out one statement about all this, um, they say they investigate allegations of an improper relationship and they were told by both you and the young man that there was no relationship. In retrospect, was that investigation a sham? Because it clearly didn't get to the truth, did it? I think if you have two people who are lying, then what, what can you do? But what did that investigation amount to? I mean, was it sort of was it just a phone call to you and a phone call to the young man? Was it sort of a proper sort of independent... I think he was attempt? asked... He was asked quite a bit. I was asked a couple of times. And so, you know, it's, um, and it wasn't formal. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think bearing in mind that there were two people who were absolutely intransigent in their denial, that it would have been pretty hard. And that, so did you coordinate your responses together to make sure the lie didn't get out? No, no, He, no, he no. lied independently, you lied independently. It was just, it was, he didn't ever want his name out there. He just wanted it all to go away. Some people would say, some people are saying, have said, that it stretches credulity to suggest that people at the top of ITV wouldn't have known about your relationship with this young man. It was pretty well known that the two of you were close and people had specifically raised this with the bosses of ITV. And people would say it's a quite a short journey from that to saying they should have done a proper and more thorough investigation and they should have got to the truth. Isn't that a reasonable thing for people to say, given we're talking about abuse of power, potentially? Given we're talking about workplace culture in an era where workplace culture is under the spotlight as never before? Yes, um, yeah. They should have, OK. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and you've been very clear about something else which you want to correct, which is, let me ask you directly, did you speak to anyone, anyone at all at ITV, about moving this young man onto another programme? Absolutely, categorically not. He was a really good... Um, colleague, um, a runner, a, a, like very good. And so, and so he applied to go to Loose Women and, um, and got the job entirely in his own merits. And I can remember him coming to me and saying, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Loose Women. I said, that's fantastic. That's so the brilliant. suggestion that ITV moved him to solve a problem that they had festering on this morning is untrue. I do not believe there is any truth in that at all. Okay. Dame Karen McCall, I don't know if you've seen, given you've returned off all the absolute phone, but she's told staff at ITV they've instructed a barrister to carry out a, an external review of the facts following your statement and departure. Will you comply with that external review if asked? Yeah, yes. OK. When, in February 2020, ITV investigated whether you were having a relationship, they failed to get to the truth. When Dr Ranj Singh, who's a regular guest on the show for many, many years, made a complaint, a formal complaint, to the bosses of ITV about toxicity on this morning, which I know we, we should discuss. They appointed an external independent advisor to do a review who found, and I quote, no evidence of bullying and discrimination. What would you say to those people who say, given that record, it's quite hard to have confidence in this latest review from ITV? I, 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 you, know, I, you just hope that it will be thorough. And, I've got, and I will also point out um, that... Uh, that I don't know. I, some people perhaps may be toxic and see toxicity everywhere because that's the lens that they're looking at the world. Um, there is no toxicity. There is no bullying. There is no discrimination at this morning. You said, you said in your statement on Instagram there is no toxicity at this morning. It's, uh, it's clear listening to you that's something you really want. You're clearly very protective of a program that you worked on for 20 years, and understandably so, because that program's reputation has taken a very severe... If there is toxicity at this morning, Ranj Singh, a formal complaint at highest levels of ITV about some particular individual's behaviour, and as he described it, the environment at this morning, why would former staffers be contacting him and Holmes, who I know is not running to be president of your fan club at the moment, but why would former staffers be contacting him, contacting him to say that they signed non-disclosure agreements to, quote, other abuse? I mean, that's... 
I'm obviously unaware of any of that. I mean, all of that goes on else. All I see is angry shouting about on anymore. So why do you think, you asked a moment ago, what it is that want to see? They're seeing you lose your job. They're watching you now suffer. Why do you think lots of people do seem to have it in for you? Are you toxic to uh, them? God, I hope not. I know exactly. I, I know. I know what the issues are with two principal people who I wish, you know, I I don't like toxicity. You said that, um, to the best of your knowledge, the young man that you had a sexual relationship wasn't moved to loose women on anything other than his own merits. He was moved there because of his own, oh, yeah. he, he applied and got a promotion and that wasn't a cultural sort of cover up by ITV. You've also said that to the best of your knowledge, he hasn't been paid for his silence. He hasn't signed a, a non-disclosure agreement or there hasn't been any sort of injunction. But I guess the other allegation or accusation that we made of ITV, and they can respond next week, interested to know what you think. It's not just that they disp displayed poor management, but it's that they allowed a culture of toxicity to develop it this morning, but didn't do anything about it because the presenters were untouchable. It was all about keeping Holly and Phil happy. I think it is utterly untrue. From my point of view, and I think Holly would say exactly the same thing, that is utterly untrue. If there was toxicity between, you know, two members of a team that I was completely unaware of and they had beef with one another, then, you know, that's, that's nothing to do with us. Um, you know, that, 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 the, 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 the program that I love and the program that I left, um, I have never seen that from my position or heard it, in fact. When did you last speak to Holly Willoughby? Uh, I um, WhatsApped her on the day that I put the statement up and I said to her, um, I know you can't reply, you're probably not allowed to. But please know that I am so desperately, desperately sorry. Did you reply? No. How do you characterise your relationship with her now? Is it broken? Uh, I, I adore Holly. I mean, I've always adored Holly. She's my TV sister. Um, and I, I, from my point of view, no. Um, I... I, I I don't have a problem with Holly at all. What would you say to her, given that she's doubtless listening to you now, what would you say to her about, maybe publicly, that you said privately about how you'd like to apologise and your hopes for mending that relationship? I would say to everyone, um, I would say to my family, my friends, my work colleagues, the public, to ITV, to my management company, to everyone that I lied to. I am desperately, desperately sorry. But principally, I would like to apologise to him because it may have been consensual, may have been fully legal, but I shouldn't have allowed it to happen. And that was a grave, grave error on my part. And I know that... Because of that, an absolutely innocent person is being persecuted. On one particular point of fact, Eamon Holmes has suggested that there were taxis from your apartment to the studio, which this young man used, um, and that those were probably paid for by ITV. Did he frequently get taxis from your studio? He didn't frequently come to my, to my flat. He came to the flat once. Um, to my recollection, he didn't stay over. He, he, he said he was passing and he was um, uh, going to come in for a beer. So the idea that he regularly got taxis from your home to utterly, ITV utterly, Studios... Utterly, utterly untrue. And also, I don't have an ITV car account. Presenters don't get that. When you came out as gay, live on this morning, Eamon and his wife were there, as you say, they were kind, they hugged you, you hugged them. He now says he felt used. Was that all fake? That's the implication of what he's saying, that it was there was this artifice to that day and that he was being used for a kind of reputational enhancement for you. You come out as gay as a reputational enhancement. I think that in itself speaks. When did you know when did you know you were gay? Um I spoke to my therapist about this because I had a wonderful marriage. Have 
a wonder marriage. Uh, not brilliant right now. Um, with an incredibly supportive wife and two beautiful children who had the most amazing time as a family. Us four is who we are. And something started to trip me up and I couldn't figure out what it was. And my therapist has said, you can, you know, you can become aware. You can, things change, things change. And over a period of time, it w was a kernel and it grew bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until I, until I was really mentally struggling and, and, and like deeply mentally struggling. And, and, and my relationship with my colleague coincided with that moment. I'm not, that is not an excuse. I am I'm making, I make no excuses. Do you mind me asking if that was your first gay relationship or had you had gay flings or sexual experiences before then? I, I, I think this interview is not about other experiences. And it's obviously one of the hardest things that anyone who's gay can go through. Why did you come out when you did? As you said, nobody forced your hand, but why did you come out on the sofa? Because when it you had did? got to the point where I weighed nine and a half stone. Um, it was utterly torturing me. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. Um, and I wanted to be brave. I'd spoke to, you know, I spoke through it with the family, who have all been incredible. Let's come to some closing thoughts. Do you feel, mindful as I am, that you are very concerned about the welfare of one particular person? Do you feel a victim in all this? No. I feel a victim of hate after the event. And I think I probably that there'll be a lot of people watching this thinking, how dare you? Um, it would be easier for me to say, I don't feel like a victim. What I feel a victim of is spun areas of non-factual information and gossip and nastiness. But I don't look anymore. I, I've already told you how I feel and I'm not in television anymore. Well, you lived a lie and with a lie and you lived with a, a secret life for a long time and they say the truth sets you free. So for all the stress that you've been lived with, do you feel at least slightly liberated by speaking out today? I'm glad that, I'm glad that it's not a lie anymore. But I'm, I'm very, if, if I could have taken the whole full brunt of this without an innocent man being hauled alongside, then fair, fair play. But the fact that an innocent man, his friends, his family, um, the association is, 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 is questioned. You know, everything has been questioned because you can say anything online. But there are a lot of lies on social media. And there are a lot of lies about you. But I've got to ask, there are people who'd say, given he lied and lied in the past, why should we believe him today? Well, I, I, only my friends and family need to worry about that because I, I, I don't, you don't have to worry about what I say anymore, do you? I'll just be saying that to the garden. Have you been abandoned by a lot of people that you were close to? Um, yes, but interestingly, I have also, it's been a very fine, fine mesh of friends. And I, it's interesting to see who came through. And it's also interesting, the new friends I've made, because there are a, a lot of people who I've never really spoken to in in my world um who have reached out and been amazing and one very prominent public figure phoned me the other day and said i wanted to check that you were okay i have never seen such homophobia in my life 
Why do you think this coverage has been homophobic? So if, if it was a heterosexual relationship, then, you know, it would have been a bit of nudge, nudge, wink, wink. If it's a gay relationship, then suddenly it raises eyebrows. It's wrong. It's wrong. People do find each other attractive in, in different age groups. I mean, it does happen. You know, but it's it's the mere fact that this is so gigantic, and I appreciate the workplace and you know I, and the history. I do, I I get that, but it's the fact that it's you know it's so massive. It's predominantly homophobia. Is this the tip of the iceberg? Are there more allegations and revelations to come, or, or as far as you're concerned, it's my all biggest, out, it's all it's my biggest, sorriest secret. Where do you think your career goes from here? Nowhere. What do you want to say to your... You, you were brandishing your um, wedding ring, um, and I'd read that you had separated. Are you...? We are separated, but we're very much together. What would you like to say to her? Oh, my God. Can you imagine how difficult that conversation was? Well, perhaps this one's slightly easier. She's not here, so you can... No, I mean, I, I will never... You know, I... I I, well, let's just say that it was an incredibly difficult conversation, the most difficult conversation I've ever had to have with her. And she is extremely disappointed because I lied to her as well. Um, but she wished me well today. Um, and so we'll see. And what would you say right now publicly to your daughters? My daughters were, I called them and said, I have something to tell you. And they came out to see me and were unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I looked at them and thought, well, you got that right. And they don't think you're a bully. And they don't think you're toxic. And they know the man you are. And they know you screwed up royally and finally what would you say to the young man in question I am he to, of, to whom I am the most sorry um, by getting involved with me I have caused you so much pain um, and I, again I am I will never forgive myself that I made a bad judgment call. And if only you knew in one moment, just one moment, if I'd had the judgment that I've had for 41 years, if I'd used it at that moment, then things would be very, very different for everybody. Philip Schofield, thank you so much for your time. If you or someone you know has been affected by 